Hey, it's Tony here from Bikeberry. Today we're gonna to talk about something that's near and dear to everyone's heart. Something that everybody wants to know, everybody's curious about. We all ask a lot of questions. We all spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. And that is none other than your carburetor's jets. Let's build it right. <laughs> First, we need to sort out what's what. There's an older NT carb, and then there's a Bofang, and then you got your HP carb. Let's get on the table and sort it all out. What is what? All right, so let's look at it left to right. This is original NT carb. You can see that has the plunger on the side. That is a five millimeter number 70 jet. Okay, step up to the Bofang. This is what you commonly see on them. This is exactly the same thing with a different filter cover. These have an eight millimeter with the number 70 jet. So eight millimeter thread, number 70 hole. Same with that one. And as far as the HP car, which is my favorite because it has an automatic choke feature, five millimeter times 70. So that's a five millimeter and a number 70 jet. So the two most common jets nowadays, the Bofang is an eight millimeter jet that's the threads. They're eight millimeter with a number 70 opening. And your HP card is a five millimeter thread with a number 70 opening. Let's look at what jets are available. Look to the left here. We have 61 through 65. Then we have 66 through 70. And then we have 71 through 75. Now, most of you are really, if a 70 is what is in your carburetor, you're probably gonna to wanna to buy these two packs because you're probably gonna to wanna to go down. It kinda of seems to be a 65 or so lands pretty much with everyone, uh, depending on your setup and what you want out of it though. You may need to adjust you know, up or down a little bit. So as a general way to look at it, 61 through 65 millimeter jets are great for riders that live in high altitudes and or low temperatures. So if you have high altitude or low temperatures, this is probably the jets for you. Now the 66 through 70 jets, that's for probably the average rider at level altitudes and warmer temperatures. Then your 71 through 75, that's for the riders at low altitudes and or high temperatures. So if any of those sound like, you know, your conditions, that's a good general guide to follow. All right, let's start at square one. So how do you know you even need to change the jet? Well, it's best to start with the proper setup on your carburetor, and then you adjust the jet, change the jet size, once you have it running the best that you absolutely can in its stock condition. I've shown this in past videos, but it bears repeating. So. Uh, once you know that your slide and everything is functioning fully, you know, that's a thing I noticed is sometimes I won't have my slide functioning fully. It all depends on where the cable is in your throttle and all that, but you want a fully functioning slide. So when you roll back the throttle, it opens wide up or closes completely. So make sure that's happening first. So check this out. Here's an example of a fully functioning slide. We get full movement. Now let's look at your idle adjustment screw. What you want to do is find a, a, a starting point. So I take it all the way out like this, okay? And then I start the thread. And I take my screwdriver, okay? And I turn it like this. So I go one, two, three. What that means is, is the adjustment screw, if you look at the slot, you're turning it one time like that, okay? So that'd be two, three, four, right? 10. So on the HP carb, see what that, that little shiny speck down in there? It's hard to point at it. <laughs> but you see the end of the screw? That can be your starting point. All right, so now after you've made the basic adjustments and you have a starting point, with your carburetor, it's on the bike, you're ready to roll, go start the bike up and let it run until it warms up completely. If you do uh, any adjustments while it's cold, it ain't gonna matter one bit. You're just gonna be chasing the idle up and down. Look at 
Let's do a quick overview of what's happening inside the carburetor as you adjust the idle adjustment screw. Now, as you screw the screw in or back it out, you're either letting more air flow through the carburetor or less air flow through the carburetor at idle, which is what balances out the mix of air and fuel delivered to the engine. One mention that I should make is that, I don't have it on here right now, but the your pin that's in here that you have a little clip on, uh, I've said it in past videos, you wanna move that clip up one. Where the HP carb is the clip is in, or I mean the pin is in there all the time, it's a stationary one. You don't get to adjust it at all, and that's fine. Uh, all you're doing is adjusting the fuel mixture with the air that's coming into this carburetor. I'll turn around that way, it'd be, make more sense. <laughs> air coming in, air and fuel going into the engine. Now this is the point where you stop guessing what the adjustment screw needs to be set at. You're gonna start the bike like I did earlier. It's warmed up and then hear how it's idling high. And when I go to roll the throttle and you know give it some gas and it revs up, and then it doesn't instantly come down, that's what we're looking for. It's still revving too high. So I'm gonna make the adjustment here, as you've seen, and you're gonna hear when you rev the engine and then it drops back to idle, it does it pretty quickly. That's the goal here. Stop guessing what to set it at and set it at uh, a nice idle. So here's an example. Here how I put, rolled the throttle back and, and then it dropped back down to a nice idle. That's the goal. So you're gonna keep messing with that and fine tuning that until you get it to return to idle rather quickly. So there you go. All you got to do now is ride the bike, make any final adjustments. Then when you get back home to your shop, then take your carburetor. You know, you may have to spin it sideways on your engine. <laughs> Oops, I'll do it this way. Spin it sideways on your engine and then pull, you know, undo the bowl, right? Uh, don't lose any of your float or anything like that. But then all you have to do is just go in here, change out, you know, take out the jet like that. Pop in another one, put the bowl back on, and then you're ready to go, okay? Then again, adjust it and ride up and down with it. And once you land on the jet that uh, works for you, then you're good. I wanted to create a video that just totally and finally answered what you're going after in adjusting your carb, and that is paying attention to the idle after you rev the throttle. And does it go back to idle quickly? So I hope that helps you. Please like, subscribe, uh, ask any questions below. Until next time, let's build it right.